Oh my goodness. What it do ski, it's your boy Phil 34 and today we're checking out Stargate SG-1. This one is season number five, episode number seven. Last episode, it was Cassie's birthday. Uh, she sort of started flipping out and turns out it was some sort of rite of passage from her home planet. Appreciated some aspects of that episode, you know, Frazier being a mom, Carter being a great aunt, and some of those subtle moments throughout that episode, but wasn't the biggest fan of Cassie. That being said, let's see what's popping on for episode number seven. We should be getting in as we should be ramping up some things for season five soon. With that being said, as always, if you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to smack the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, Stargate fam. Let's get into this one, guys. Cheers. Yikes. Ah, we have a wild gate. Is it a granola bar or a hamburger? I can't tell. Unas. Oh, this is from, uh, the same sandwich. Or, uh, not sandwich. Uh, ooh, dino offered it, right? The primitive Unas. What in tarnation? Okay, y'all gotta be just as confused as I am. I don't think that's SG people because they would be in uniform. Unless we have other planets are starting to come there. They figured out how to use the gate technology. That could be it. We'll find out. Past year, I've been studying the Unus of Beast P3X of Burden. Abducted the Unus I refer to as Chaka. That's the one that kidnapped you. Mm -hmm. Same one. It's his boy. What would they want with an Unus? I don't know, but I'd like to find out. I care. I also think it might be relevant to investigate how these men got ghouled weapons and from where. Chaka is an ungulded Unus, uh, an intelligent being who learned to trust yeah. humans because of me. See, every time I went back with SG-11 to retrieve the video footage, I would leave Chaka a gift. It's an energy bar. It's something to help me break through when we first met. How do we find out where these men took him? Oh, the coordinates are already there. Boom. Well, General, if they've got ghouled weapons, you gotta wonder what else they got. Now Jack can find an excuse to go. You have a go. Okay. Another one of those stories that I didn't necessarily think we we're gonna come back to. Pete has entered the chat. Must be three clicks in that Marty has grabbed the camera. Evidence of a so they probably got overrun by ghouls and sort of kicked them out and then just stole their shit. Seems like the play. And they're probably getting the witness to work as slaves. He can crush train at the stone mill from first light to day's end. <laughs> Well, actually, we came through the the Stargate. The um. Chapa I. Chapa I. Yes. My name is Burra. Burra. I'm Daniel Jackson, and this is Colonel Jack O'Neill. It is our custom to welcome visitors with a drink. Will you join me? So, uh, Daniel seems like he's gonna get tested this episode. Honesty, huh? We're traitors. Yeah, we've traded. We trade. You thank a beast? Yes, uh, positive reinforcement. We find it a successful method of training. I have stood for hours on end, pressing different combinations, but nothing happened. The fact that you have come here from a place we do not know proves that I am right. They have been passed down through the lineage of certain families since the Beast Wars. Generations ago, like the Beast enslaved series. our forefathers. They learned how the Beast's weapons worked and led an uprising. And the Masters became the slaves. Since then, the Beasts have served us. Maybe he's just pissed because you keep torturing <laughs> He speaks? Yes. It's because he's mine. Mm. You cannot have it. Here we go. P90's up. I could offer another Unus in exchange. You don't understand. This one's name is Shaka, and he is coming with me. Daniel's not budging. Definitely a tough position to be in, right? Can't just go guns a blazing. Usually Daniel's the one to negotiate, so Jack should have to take charge Daniel? here. Your Unus is worth it, or you would not have traveled all this way. Have some sort of plan to do something about this, or...? Uh... Well, right now I'm not sure I'm gonna do anything. Chaka wasn't born into this kind of... domestication. He's known freedom his whole life. The, the, the Unus of his planet lived together in families. They loved their children. They... Seen the cave drawings. I will not leave him here like this. Let's go, Daniel. Even if it means risking human lives. 
and we're gonna do it without taking human lives. I could see this going completely south and this just sets Daniel off on a bad, bad course. Down. Shock. The eyes seem extra emotive compared to last time. Okay, here come the boys. He's not moving. Move back. Oh shit. He says this one's marked for death. Come on. He says that they're all marked for death. Again, we don't know how stacked they are in terms of their armor. Alright, they could have some big guns sure, we haven't even seen. At least ten men heading your way. We're laying down cover fire. Ah, oh, shit. Shit. Oh, no, we got guy. Ah. Oh. These guys clearly show no mercy. And even even though the, we use that uh, Zats just to stun you, you know, they could double tap, triple tap, no problem. Coast, give, give. Yes, yes, check out. Cut. Go, go, go. Daniel, you okay? Ah, been better. Colonel O'Neill? Oh, uh, physically fine, but I... I'm not expecting a birthday present anytime soon. Go. Intercepted. Oh. There were too many of them, sir. You ordered us not to shoot to kill. We couldn't stop them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Roger. Their lives are in jeopardy. Yeah. They're in the bin. <laughs> it's a tough call. Ma. Khan. Ma. Khan. No. Kanchama. Thank you for trying to free me. Sorry for getting you into this mess. Shakao. I'm with a bunch of Unas. Who's to blame is not at the top of my list of concerns. Just yet. Well, that's amazing. What? Language is a learned behavior. Chaka must have taught this Unas his word. Shaka so. Chaka. No. They're saying Chaka is their leader. All I said was Chaka so. I was wrong. Chaka, Chaka isn't different. Well, it has to change. How? Meddled in other planets' cultures before. I'd like to think that there was another way. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. I really am. Stealing is wrong. It is. This is dilemmas galore this episode. Spreading the word. Trust me, Daniel. A whole lot of people are going to have to die around here before one Unis goes free. At this point, I'm actually really interested to see how they're going to resolve this and who's going to come out on top. But, Jack, like Jack said, I don't think there's a way that they can reason their way, their way out of this unless they try and bargain something. But Daniel's even farther down in his beliefs now about what he's going to do about the situation um, where they got to get everyone out. And that's going to be taken away there, what they've been doing for this time. Uh, they've already meddled in, in culture before. Sometimes it's in Jack's interest. And, not, and hasn't been in Daniel's. This time, it's clearly more in Daniel's interest. But Jack and team are now in danger. So uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how they get out of this one. I would say they just call up for backup. But... See if they can do it with just them. Colonel Dewey. They got the shop eye unlock. Oh, and he's got the P90. Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. Tactical O'Neill is, is in the building. This, this is not a good situation. I do not understand why you take such risks for this beast. He is very valuable to me, but certainly you can replace him with one of equal lineage. Because they're not beasts. They're self-aware, intelligent beings. And you have no right. What would you have us do? Free them. <laughs> a way to coexist. For that, we thank them. You don't coexist. You use them as slaves. Look. Oh, this guy wants a smoke. Nothing. He's gonna use a P90. Yeah. Oh my fucking goodness. Nah, nah, nah. It seems to stop working after it's been fired for a while. Hunger and thirst will weaken you. Perhaps tomorrow you will tell me what I want to know. DD is in the building. God damn. It may cost me. But I believe it may be worth it. Until tonight. 
I guess it was, was a calm on for, for Tilk to, to react like that or was just... Was that just the way they cut it? But there's dozens more who'd be all over us in seconds. And we'd have to get through the gate. A diversion. I thought I told you to hold your position at the gate. Yes, sir. How That's still your concern. Please advise. Over. I don't think we're going to talk our way out of this one. Damn it, Daniel. Let's get out of here. All of us. Yeah. Joining us. Do what you have to do, Carter. Oh, nice. Always got to keep the C4 on deck. You never know when you're going to need it. Oh, shit. Okay, nice. Get back. Let's go. Check it out. Definitely got an ambush going at the gate. It's okay, Shaka. Cut it. Friend. Hey, hey! Stop! Gekka! Shaka! Oh no, 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 no! Oh no! Daniel skips that training day. Oh god. Chaka! No! No na. No na. Home. Aka. Kek. We did all this to save you. Aka. Kek. Daniel, we didn't come here to arm them. Well, they did that themselves. Shaka. You just sent him out to start good. a war. Yep. And it was his choice. I told him they didn't have to kill. Do you think he understands that? They know what freedom is and they're willing to fight for it. Let's start getting to the gate. And that was my reaction video to Stargate SG-1. This one was season number five, episode number seven. So this was the return of uh, Daniel's friend Shaka. And it was an interesting premise, I thought, over overall here. And I, and I did enjoy this episode here. The idea of uh, Daniel feeling sort of responsible, him wanting to look after his friend, that only to be robbed with some tough dilemmas. You go there, your main objective was to go rescue your friend and leave with minimal casualties. And I think that was, you know, a reasonable play to do. But... As the episode went along, I thought it was really interesting how conflict got a little bit more murky. They started to realize that this guy who was running the whole situation um, was pretty irredeemable and there wasn't much negotiations to be had. Casualties became an inev inevitable, especially once their lives became in jeopardy. So. Um, I thought this was actually a pretty good episode, and uh, I, I like the way that things sort of escalated as it continued on. It was the same, uh, the, the exact same maybe actor who played played Shaka as well. Uh, Ethics-centered episode of Stargate SG-1. You come into this planet, they're being enslaved. One of the people that you have, I guess, an affiliation with or, or you care for is being enslaved. What do you do? Kill all the people there just to save that one person? Do you um, just take, you know, do you expect... Um, the person you were trying to save, seeing all of the, their people enslaved and they have the opportunity to stop that, are they going to do it? So I think it was interesting to follow Daniel's train of thought throughout the episode and what his stance was. And obviously O'Neill was trying to help him as much as he could. But once their lives became in jeopardy, once the guy was, you know, just out here Xing people off one by one, it's kind of it's kind of interesting how it took them to be in the shoes of the other Unas to sort of understand it. If, if I'm Daniel and I see that these people are all being enslaved and mistreated, why would I only want to get the one person? I think at that point it comes to like logistics. It's like, are they one gonna murder a whole you know village just to save to 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 free these unasses? I would have thought that Dana might have just come up to the conclusion like we got to get them all out right now, right? But I guess at that point it, it, they putting themselves at risk. 
are they going to cause more casualties by doing that? So I think they're just going back and forth with that idea of this episode. And I mean, in overall, I don't know if I had the most reaction at points or, or, or commentary. I definitely enjoyed that uh, watching how this this one unfolded, especially back and forth between Daniel and, and, and Jack. Obviously, they are really steeped in some of their beliefs initially and, and, and their, their, their their thoughts on the matter. And But in the end, they escape with minimal, minimal casualties, uh, except for obviously the ringleader. He got bodied. They didn't even show us his face. His face was definitely splattered. I mean... It, it's happened in other times where we've meddled with interesting to see if in a few seasons we come back and the village is just completely decimated all the people are dead and uh chaka is leading them and it's just the same cycle repeated it's sort of up in the air as to what's going to happen now that chaka is it, it, that this revolution is starting from the unas's population there uh and even if it succeeded or not so how do we decide when to and when not to meddle in other civilizations problems is it personal base or is it what is right is it circumstantial? Um, and I think this episode dealt with that in an interesting manner. But guys, that was Stargate SG-1 season number five, episode number seven. This one was the Beast of Burden. What did you guys think about this one? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. But with that being said, I will catch you guys in the next one. Love you guys.